Hi, I'm Wesley. This is my channel, 22 Zines, and this is episode two of my new series, Zine Collector, where I am showing off my collection of zines in different categories. Uh, today's category is what I would just call just for fun zines, which are things that don't really fit into one other category. They're not exactly how-tos. They're not exactly uh, literature. They're not exactly whatever. Yeah, maybe I should have put the miscellaneous category later, but I didn't, so here we go. The first thing I want to show off is Mathematics for Misfits. This is volume 1.1, so they did a little redo with it. Uh, and this basically is a hilarious sort of goth, heavy metal, satanic take on math, rewording cla classic or, you know, word problems with more Satanist or um, heavy metal or goth themes. Uh, it is really pretty. There's a bunch of cool art. This whole thing is printed on the black, which is just fucking awesome. And, um, and I do like it. The thing with this one is I was expecting this to be more of a textbook written for goth people to learn mathematics. This is more of a workbook for people who want some goth themed problems to solve through. Um, I like math. Uh, <laughs> it's been a little while. Um, I wasn't that good at it to begin with, so this isn't entirely helpful. It's more of a fun read than an actual how-to guide on learning different aspects of mathematics. Just to give an example of this, um, here's one page that um, I'm going to be reading off where this says, two researchers at Heavy Metal University de determines that the word Satan is used an average of 27 times throughout the albums of heavy evil evil heavy metal bands <laughs> with a standard deviation of nine times. As an added bonus, their data follows a normal distribution. What is the probability that a typical evil heavy metal band uses the word Satan at least 25 times on their record? And that's the first problem. Like, yeah, that'd be great. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to solve that. There's no answer key. There's no nothing like that. I, you know, I wish there was. <laughs> I'd really be a lot more motivated to learn math with this stuff, but, you know. Anyway, it's still kind of a fun read. I still like, if nothing else, just kind of flipping through it. And there is some cool-ass art in here, like, here's a great one. Um, <laughs> if you are more mathematically inclined, then you might enjoy flexing your skills with Mathematics for Misfits. Um, I believe that it's a collaboration of authors and the uh, creator or whatever just goes by Mathematics for Misfits. So it's pretty easy to find. And I got this from Quimby's pretty recently. So it is in print. All right. The next just for fun zine that I have is Billy McCall's A Zine Zine Proposition, which is... You know what? I'm just going to read the back. Is that lame? I'm just going to read the back because I feel like it describes it way better than I ever could. All right. Sebastian Case is a rich douchebag who runs a multi-million dollar company. Missy Ward is his loyal and hardworking assistant. But what happens when they go to Las Vegas? That's right. They get drunk and fuck for like three days straight. They both regret it, but keep doing it. She gets pregnant, and on the last page of the book, they get married. Will Sebastian ever trust another woman after his first wife was such a bitch? Will Missy ever shut up about the fact that she's just a small town girl from Texas? And what about Tim and all his anime? Don't worry, I read this whole book highlighting the best slash worst sentences. Does any of it make sense when taken out of context like this? Not really, but then again, this book made no sense anyway. Enjoy. Basically, um, it's this... Uh, romance novel called Winner Takes All. Always powerful, passionate, and provocative, according to the original uh, back of the book. And um, 
Billy McCall read it and, as he says, highlighted each of the best slash worst sentences and put them together into a new story right here. You get such excellent lines as generous handfuls of breasts <laughs> and um, it'll just take me a second for me to grab my anime DVDs. Um, I like it recommends summarized version of the original book. Absolutely hilarious. Very fun. The next one that I've got is My Complicated Relationship with Food. I only have the second volume. I think there's three out now. I don't know. I probably should have checked before I filmed this. It's basically just chock full of a bunch of opinions on different types of food written by someone named Zach. Uh, Bunny Project, I believe, is the zine project name, according to this. Um, I actually got this just in a little trade. I'm pretty sure it's still out and about, though. Just to give you an idea of what it's like, I think it would be easiest if I just read a little piece of it here. French fries. <sighs> French fries are possibly the best food in the world. There are times I will think about people in really swanky restaurants eating stuff like risotto and duck foam and wonder what the fuck is wrong with them. It seems impossible to me that their fancy shit could possibly be better than french fries. Look, I know I don't have a refined palate, and yes, I would probably enjoy more foods if I actively forced myself to eat bougie garbage on a regular basis. But the way I look at it is like this. Your artisanal brie and quinoa souffle topped with truffle braised veal is like opera. I'm not a big fan of opera. I'm sure I could grow to appreciate it more. I recognize that there is a great deal of skill in singing operas. Opera has a rich history dating back centuries, totally a legit art form capable of manifesting feelings of sublime delight among its aficionados, just like fancy food. But french fries are like actual fucking, simple and pure and salty, and no matter how much you like opera, you are not going to convince me that it is better than sex. So, once again, my complicated relationship with food. My next Just for Fun zine is called Eleven Teen, technically Pocket Thoughts number 11 teen, uh, as part of the zine project Pocket Thoughts. And this is basically just a parody of um, popular teen girl magazines like Seventeen, or at least Seventeen how it used to be. It's actually pretty legit now. <laughs> like, talks about a lot of actual social justice stuff, which is rule. Um, but, you know, the classic, you know, 90s retro <laughs> version. Um, and of course, as you can see, I just, just from the lizard on the front, that gives you a pretty good idea of what it's all about. Um, it's got advertisements. It's got um, Ask Allison. It's got retro playlists. It's got hot summer fashion tips and, of course, uh, you know, a profile on the model on the cover, uh, <laughs> Lizzie Shue or Lizabelle Schumacher. And it is just absolutely hilarious. I really, I really love magazine style stuff because actually the first zine that I ever made I, um, I didn't even realize it was a zine at the time, but it was a collaborative zine that was part of this, like, um, I don't know what you'd call it. It was basically like sex ed, but they, and they split the classes for girls and boys. And so at the time they put me in with the girls and we did this sort of collaborative zine where we expressed what it was like to be a 13 year old girl in 2006 or eight or whenever it was. Uh, <laughs> so this just sort of reminds me <laughs> of how I feel reading my old zine now. <laughs> anyway, really fun. Let's see if I can find anything that I could read that wouldn't be, um, all right, here we go. Wouldn't be a spoiler. Here we go. There are, of course, horoscopes for your sign. And uh, if you're a Libra like me, then you get to hear it right now. Anyone else, you gotta go buy this. All right, Libra. 
Positivity is on your plate with a side of new career prospects. No one is saying you have to sleep with your boss to advance the position in the company, but if he smells good, drives a hot car, and he will buy you some new shoes, don't pass up a good thing. Eleventeen. Pocket thoughts. And the last scenes I have in this category are a series called Thrifty Times, and it's a series of zines from a local zine store, which is great because I know all of the places that they mention in this zine, you know, except for the foreign issue, which of course is the one that I'm holding up right now. Um, it's a thrift store zine. It talks about um, their favorite hobby. Uh, this is by uh, Sarah McDonald, by the way. Um, and it talks about favorite finds at thrift stores and... Um, <laughs> Re like book reviews and movie reviews from you know things that they've picked up from thrift stores and records um thrifty tips and just any and everything that has to do with thrift cards thrifty guide to postcards it is so much fun i really love it um and there are comics on the back of this holy shit i am obsessed with comics comics are the best so what's really cool about thrifty times is that um, the creator has a zine subscription option right now. So for, and they're super cheap. These are each like $2 and that is, I love a cheap zine. Okay. All of my zines are going to be as cheap as possible always. And you know, I just, <laughs> it seems fitting in the spirit of thrifty times. Right. But anyway, they have a subscription thing. You can get six issues for 10 bucks and they'll send them out to you monthly. It's such a nice surprise in your mailbox. I just really love it. I think that my favorite one is probably the Germany issue because it talks about a bunch of thrift stores from their trip to Germany several years ago. Um, so it's not, you know, it's all COVID safe. And, so, and it just shows a bunch of very interesting, often stereotypical things that you'd find. This is probably my favorite, is the the Liberace, the German Lederhosen Liberace doll. Really excellent. So, I think that's about it for the um, Just for Fun zines, and tune in next week for another category. Bye!